Cool. Thank you. And it looks like we answered Mark's or Emily answered uh, Mark's question as, as well. Being being heroic. Uh, so for as, as for those that are watching the recording, why don't you read it out? Because they won't have the chat. Oh, cool. oh that M M that Todd uh, Emily is Todd's hero. That part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So Emily is is Todd's. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about forms, um, not just forms, small F, forms, capital F, the Microsoft 365 application called Microsoft Forms. So Derek's out today, but you've got the, the rest of our lovable faces in the place. Um, here's what we'll go through. It's just the basics of using forms. What is it? How does it work? Um, why would people use it? Common use cases. And what to use when, I think, is where we add a little value here in that um, there's lots of things, ways you can do things with forms in Microsoft 365. Um, some of you are old enough to remember InfoPath and InfoPath forms, other people using list forms, custom web forms, etc. So we'll talk about what to use when, and then we'll talk about some of the things that we've learned in our use with forms, some, some good, some bad, some ugly. So the things we can do with Microsoft forms, if you need to create surveys or users, um, for your organization, and that's both internal and external. We can make it, it's easily um, made available to external users. Mark, I think you were in the chat earlier talking about some limitations to that, though, in terms of anonymity, perhaps, or was that in lists? No, Microsoft Forms is, is the place where you can do anonymous forms. So, for instance, if you wanted to ask your customers to fill out a form, you can do that with Microsoft Forms, but not lists. And we've had a lot of clients ask put a put a survey out there like hey how do you like the internet and and intentionally set make it anonymous so that people can answer more frankly and we have we have that capability in forms um, as the person who owns the form i can see the real-time results as they're submitted and use analytics that are built built right into forms to evaluate the, the responses they're rudimentary right but i can do some very basic stuff in line with with visuals and show show verbatims and little pie charts of content. If I want to do more, I can always take that um, the response information out to to Excel. So some use cases that we've seen certainly feedback. You know, your day one. How how's the internet working for you? The user research with open ended questions and other quantitative mess uh, methods. The a Likert scale, a one through ten kind of uh, assessment. Um, learning quizzes and assessments. So for folks in the EDU space, I know there's been a lot of effort put into this, but we use them occasionally for the upfront assessment. You know, the Global Ethics and Compliance Organization, it's it's ethics month, T you know, take the assessment and baseline how ethical you are and how well you know um, our ethical framework in the organization or how did you do in this course? And we wanna be careful about that because it's not keeping results and uh, delivering results to like a learning management system in line here you could if you're not ethical though wouldn't you just lie on the on the survey you could there's some selection bias there i, I presume right um some some simple process initiations like uh, credit card requests etc and then we use it for this webinar to get uh, to get feedback uh certainly community involvement those of us who do things like run user groups uh, or other events. I'm sure we've used forms for, for that there. Any other use cases that folks have used in the wild um, that you don't see here? Krista? Krista's um, hand is up. Yeah, sorry about that. I was just uh, finishing up my apple. Um, yeah, just uh, I started using the image option that you can add to the, the top of a form and a top of the forum section for feedback on uh, screenshots and things like that. So uh, my team is currently doing, um, uh, we're workshopping a, a mock-up of navigation menu. So I've built it in SharePoint, added the screenshots into each one of the sections of the forum and asked people to provide feedback of what they're seeing on there rather than giving them access to a site, you know, before we kind of get to that stage. It's been quite handy to be able to do that actually. It um, So they can look at the section itself and be able to see the real world example and then they can provide the feedback uh, directly on it. It's uh, It's been kind of cool. Nice. Krista, do you put two images, like affiliate two images with a question to say, do you prefer A or B? I don't I didn't think there was a way to do that. 
No, I haven't done that. Sorry. No, this is just a, um, a mock-up of a proposed navigation. So we, we're kind of starting from nothing. <laughs> okay. So it's uh, it's an option of here's what we're proposing. What do you like about it, essentially? So okay. right now we, we've just had them as open-ended kind of text questions. We don't have um, an AB format. Yeah, AB nothing format. like that yet. But uh, but yeah, I, I'd love to be able to do that. I, I think probably well, you the could... only way to do so it would be to create a joint image or something. I don't know. Yeah, I was just going to say you could do an image with text on it and say this is a and b and then put a question yeah. like do you like a or b better as like right. a multiple choice type of thing and then yeah why you know yeah are you yeah. talking about the location like on on that form that we've got on the screen right now where where that asks in praxis images is that where you're putting it um i'm not sure i think so in each and when you add a new section to the form in the Got section it. title you have the, there's section. an image icon so that's where i've yep. been adding mine so i cool. i was limited with having to add a section for each um image that i wanted to display because i couldn't just add an image and then a question then an image and a question i, I don't know if there's a way to do that but uh but yeah that was how i was doing it no that's cool i, I hadn't thought of the section thing great idea Cool. Thank you. And it looks like we answered Mark's or Emily answered uh, Mark's question as, as well. Being being heroic. Uh, so for as, as for those that are watching the recording, why don't you read it out because they won't have the chat. Uh, cool. Oh, that M M that Todd uh, Emily is Todd's hero. That part of it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So Emily is is Todd's. Yeah. Yeah. One we of my had a, many, certainly. <laughs> we had a good question around um, preferred resources for designing questions to avoid bias. And I referenced uh, Nielsen Norman Group, which is nngroup.com, and I highly recommend all their information. Yes. And so Emily said that she lives off of their advice. And then I replied that I live off of Emily's advice. So that's uh, that's how that works. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the transitive we property of advice. Yeah, yeah, that's I learned about it in math. Yeah, eighth grade, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, move us, move us yeah. along, please. <laughs> so these are the these are the forms options that we talked about, and some of the considerations. Mark, do you want to you want to take the lead and kind of walk us through some of this? We you you kind of drove this this slide when we prepped. Sure, sure. I mean, I think I think like with most things in Microsoft 365, there's sort of a spectrum of options that go from simple to more complex depending on what your skills are and who you are and what what you're trying to accomplish so i think i think microsoft forms is somewhat equivalent on some level to the the forms we get with microsoft lists you know if you set up a list with a bunch of columns you get a, a form for free that uh allows you to collect data so those two those two are sort of semi-equivalent starting points uh, there's a uh, there's another slide that sort of compares the two, so we can point out some of the differences. With Microsoft Lists, you can then you can then uh, format those those forms using JSON. So there's a lot more power over, or control over what the form looks like than you can get in Microsoft Forms. Um, you know, you can you can uh, insert some some graphics, for example, or you could. Um, uh, you could, uh, uh, da, 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 what else can you do there? You can, you can change the header, you can format the, the fields that you're asking for and things like that. Power apps was pro would probably be the next thing in that spectrum where you are, you know, you're there at, at that point, you, you've got a full canvas, a canvas of a power app would be a canvas app and you can really lay things out any way you want. So it gives you far more, comp uh, flexibility, but also you have to um, do a bit more work to, to, to do that. You can connect the, the data source to a, a SharePoint list or something else with Power App. So um, you have a little bit more flexibility on the back end as well. And then finally, custom solutions, probably using SharePoint framework. Julie, that's your that's your uh, bailiwick. Do you have anything that you would recommend there? I mean, there's a new well, I was just capability say coming new, out. You can now create a SharePoint framework uh, web part page that that ends up being the either new uh, display or edit form for um, a list item. So that's a new feature, and that's so that's then you could really get fancy. So and I yeah. think I I think I think sometimes the conversation about forms, the word form, gets 
gets very complicated because people tend to group the the place where you collect the data and what happens to the data after that is as one thing. You know, like when people think of InfoPath forms, they actually think of the whole process that that represents. Well, to me, there's the form, you collect some stuff, and then whatever happens to that content is, is really a separate uh, set of thoughts. You know, right. It sounds it feels more like the business analysis or the insights of the data, not the data, the form itself to me right. too. Yep. Right. So that's where some of the decision points come from is is almost more you know, there's what does it look like? What am how am I collecting it? But also what happens to it after that? Does it feed a process? Does it uh you know, does it have to go into some power BI report? Does it whatever? Yep. Yeah. We had a lot of discussion about this when we were doing the prep, and I, I kind of wanted to tell one funny story. Uh, so Mark and I were on a call with a customer a couple of days ago, and they had some some form consideration. And it seemed, you know, not complicated, but not simple. And so uh, Mark was telling him, I should use forms, you should do whatever. And I was kind of biting my tongue, but I, but it seemed like something that you would do with Power Apps. So um, in the back channel, I was talking to a buddy of mine, Shane Young, who is at Power Apps. 911. So he's a power apps guy. So I said, Hey, we got a thing. We're looking to do a thing. Have you ever done anything like this? What's the level of level of effort? He's like, Oh yeah, we've done that. He's like, but you really should just use forms. Like this is a dumb use for power apps. <laughs> um, and so we had that discussion during the thing. And I think I looked at forms once like four years ago or whenever it came out and sort of dismissed it as too simple and not really a, a big tool. And uh, it turns out I was completely wrong. And so I, I, I give you this cautionary tale uh, that if you've done the same thing, if you've looked at forms once and dismissed it, uh, it's actually a lot more full featured than uh, than I thought it was. I think it, I think that Microsoft Forms came out and it was actually built for education, and it came out around the time that we were all moaning endlessly about the fact that there was no replacement for InfoPath. So. It, it was like, well, they just put something out that has the word form in it. What the <laughs> heck? You know, this isn't the thing, right? And so it sort of soured a lot of us on it, but it actually is a very solid, um, solid set of tools. Yeah. And, and, and like Mark said, you know, once you start about thinking about the interface and the back end differently, that helps with some of these decisions. That was a good piece of advice. I knew all that, but I hadn't really thought about that. And that's a good thing to keep in mind. So segue to the next slide about kind of feature comparison between forms and lists. There's one thing I wanted to point out in here. A lot of times, and Julie, I know we've talked about this with a lot of clients, difference between doing something in a power app, a low code application versus, versus a more robust SPFX um, solution, a lot of times is durability, right? If I built that power app and I'm the user and it's an, under my account, it's got to run as me, I leave, I change roles, problems. Uh, very similar thing with Microsoft Forms, right? If I create a form, I leave the organization. I, when I was researching, get coming in today, I leave the organization, my data gets deleted after 30 days. All the data I have related to that form is irretrievable by anybody else. So if you're thinking about durability, um, that is definitely, and you can create things in forms that write data to Microsoft lists with Power Automate. It's pretty easy to do. There's out-of-the-box connectors for doing it. I've done it. Like the least technical person on this call has done it. <laughs> so it's certainly doable. It doesn't require a high degree of technical acumen, but uh, something to definitely consider the durability. So that being said, let's talk about what I would choose for each of these things or the, just the way some of the features line up. Emily, do you want to take a first whack? I know others will have comments too. Yeah, absolutely. And to continue on your comment around uh, forms durability, there's also the capability to make the forms based off of your M365 group, which is really nice when you want it to outlast your tenure at a company or you want to have the same set of people having access to edit that form and see the responses. You're just not one person managing it. So for our feature comparison list, you know, there are some areas where, for example, mobile app, we don't have one for Microsoft Forms, but we can get to it through the M365 app. That's not necessarily a negative, um, but there is a specific standalone for Microsoft Lists. Typically, that's not something that's going to make me decide which one to use. More often than not, 
thinking about where I want to present that form and how I want to get it to the end users is something that I will care about. So both forms and lists we can embed in SharePoint um, or add as a tab in Teams. Special power of Microsoft Forms is that you can actually pull within a Teams meeting. That's not something we can do with lists. When you embed your Microsoft list, just go backwards a step, I missed a point that when you embed it in SharePoint, yes, there's an out of the box list web part, but what you can do is you can actually use the embed web part. And if you grab that URL to your list and instead of having that .aspx of a view, if you change that to say new form .aspx, you can have that entry like add new form embedded right there in a page where you put the context above. And I do this a lot with clients because very often we we need to set some kind of context around what you're filling out. What's the expected turnaround time? Who do you reach out to for questions? Are there other steps in this process? I could uh, addendum that by if you're using the new SharePoint framework thing and you do that new form.aspx, it will show your customized SharePoint framework solution in that form that you embedded. So you can get more robust that way. That's awesome. A couple of the other things where we make decisions of forms versus lists, I think comes down to branching and hidden columns. So we can easily branch in Microsoft Forms. I can't necessarily hide just one the way I can with hidden columns and lists, but arguably you can kind of tweak both of them to get near the same end goal, depending on how complex your branching is. So for example, if someone says the internet is terrible and I want them to give me an open text only when they say something's negative, I could do that with branching in forms, or I could do that with a conditional column um, in Microsoft lists, where when someone selects no, then that's when they see that free text answer. We do have a lot more customization options in Microsoft lists, which Mark has already called out. So we do have like an overall theme that we can apply in our forms. We do have those sections and we can put some text in the beginning of it, but we really can't push it as far as we can push the lists. The other two that really push me towards forms is what Mark already called out, that there's this capability to have anonymous access, which I don't have with lists. When I'm doing user research, sometimes that can be incredibly important because I want people to give me their honest opinions and they may not feel comfortable doing that when they're named. And then also having fast out of the box analytics can be really useful, especially if it's a short one time um, approach where you're trying to analyze that data and you don't necessarily want to put all the time into making a dashboard to share those findings with the team and you can embed the results in SharePoint as well. Emily, could I ask um, Krista, I think, because Krista, I believe you're in Canada. Have you done anything with multilingual forms? I haven't, no. Um, our organization is um, just English uh, primarily, so we don't do anything specifically. Okay. But one of the things that we do have um, to factor in for using forms is the data center for Microsoft Forms actually stores in the US versus uh, Canada for a lot of our oh, other okay. features in M365. So we do have some limitations with what we can capture using forms because of that. But uh, no, I, I haven't actually done anything with the multilingual side. Okay. Yeah, my understanding when Emily and I were talking about this to prep is that multilingual will change the user interface. So the system, the system uh, strings, et cetera, will be, will be translated. But if you want to translate actual content in questions, you probably have to create a branch, right? So what is your preferred language? English, French, Spanish, and then branch the subsequent questions to be in the language that the users chosen. That's my understanding of how it would work. I, I, if, Emily, if you saw it differently, please tell me, but I think that's how it plays out. The multilingual is for system settings only, you know, system menus and the like. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so a couple of better practices that have emerged in our time and dealing with forms. Emily, you want to you share your scars with us here? 
Sure. So they've improved this a little bit since I got my initial scar, but essentially what happened was I had a Microsoft form. I sent it out to the community. I just wanted to send some free stickers and I was silly. And for some reason I deleted the responses. I don't remember why, but that, that is permanent and they're gone for forever. It's not backed up anywhere. It's not like you can restore it the way you can restore content you delete from your OneDrive or SharePoint. I got so used to having all of those backup options that this really surprised me. Fortunately, now when you click that ellipses to delete responses they have an additional pop-up now which i have on this slide where they're calling out they will be permanently deleted so hopefully that's going to help people from making the same mistake that i did but one thing that you can do in some scenarios where you want to back up this data you can use power automate to grab that data from the forms and put it somewhere else in microsoft 365 more often than not we see this usually going into a sharepoint list and then that maybe has some additional columns so that the people supporting whatever this intake is can track what they've completed, what next steps need to happen, et cetera. And didn't you didn't that happen because you deleted the form and it deleted the data? So you got it, you got you were giving out the stickers, you got enough entries to give away all the stickers, and you're like, I don't want people to fill this out anymore and think they're gonna get stickers. So you deleted the form and that deleted the data? No, I still had the form. I don't I think I was just trying to delete responses because I like locked it and I was trying to clear it. I, it was a little while ago, so I don't remember yeah. the details, but that form still exists and it just has less responses now. And I could still, I, I could close it and reopen it and things like that. Yeah, but I think I think that if you did delete the form, the, the form and the data are married together in the Microsoft form service. So if you delete the form, the data goes with it. Definitely. Yeah. And the reason I mentioned that is because, uh, you know, I've been doing this computer thing for a while. When I see a modal box like this pop up, I read the text about 10% of the time. I'm all about OK and next and finish. And, you know, this one's a pretty important one and there's no way to get through it. So, you know, or get, get it back. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to scare everybody so they would read the text of the box. And, um, there's a question from Krista in the chat about, is there any plan for a CAPTCHA like feature? in forms i'd kind of be surprised because forms tend to be internal right hung off of your intranet or affiliate associated with your tenant so they're not like web facing where anybody could could come in but i'm not i'm certainly not aware of any sort of capture like um feature or, well the anonymous down. version of it is essentially that anyone could be hung out there can go there so yep. yeah because that's like for collab days new england that's the type of form if they've got the URL, they can get to the form and fill it out. Gotcha. Um, I think you, if you care, then it's probably more around the idea of you limit it. You wouldn't make it anonymous. You'd say it has to be one of the, you know, a uh, member of your organization or whatever. But I don't have you gotten anymore. spam, Kristen? Is it does that happen? Well, we uh, our external website does get spammed a lot. We don't use forms on the external website, but any of the forms that exist that don't have a recapture option do get spammed. Sure. So we have specifically not promoted Microsoft Forms as a replacement option for the external website because it doesn't have that uh, security feature either. Most of the time, I, I'm on the internal side, so I use it with uh, just as you said, not you know, no anonymous options. We always track who uh, who folks are, or at least we do use it internally if we do have some sort of anonymity. Um, but I, yeah, I just I didn't know if it was planning on um, or if it was coming up in in one of the new features so that we could potentially recommend it for external usage. Uh, but if not, so be it. <laughs> I just double checked the roadmap and I'm not seeing it there. The things that I'm seeing coming for August um, are related to like timing the quiz or distributing your forms directly from forms into um, teams in a, a channel or chat, but nothing about reCAPTCHA. Yeah, I remember when the user voice was still active. I remember upvoting that request, but then user voice disappeared and I, I don't know what happened to any of the uh, <laughs> features that were requested at that time. I, I had, Is there a replacement for user voice? I, I shouldn't, I don't know if that's relevant at this point, but. If so I wish I had one of those sound boards because when you said I don't know what happened to the things that were in user voice, I, I would have the flushing toilet sound. <laughs> I would that. Or, the, or the slide whistle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think we all have a pretty good idea where those suggestions went. Fair enough. 
Uh, the new one is feedbackportal.microsoft.com that I just put into the chat. But it's been around, I feel like it's been more than six months and it still says preview. So I don't know what that is about. We're also looking at August roadmap issues on today, August the 52nd. <laughs> yeah, also true, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> they, they did move some items from user voice over to the new feedback center, but not the ones we actually wanted them to. <laughs> Yeah, my guess is we are in full swing for conference season since Power Platform Conference is happening right now, and then we have Ignite in a couple of weeks. So maybe they're just going to have a really exciting roadmap update that morning of Ignite. Can't wait. My path toward forms and whiteboard MVP is is uh, is, is underway. <laughs> All right. A um, couple of resources we put together and used in. Uh, and looking at this, I, I know there's a comment that you want to make in here, Mark. Feel free about the transition from Docs to Learn. Yes, well, it, that is that one. Sure. So, so before until last Friday, everything that a lot of the of the things that we're used to looking at were it was at docs.microsoft.com, and over the weekend they rebranded a lot of things into learn.microsoft.com and. To Microsoft, this is a huge change, and they've got a whole bunch of landing page changes for Microsoft Learn, but you'll end up on the same content with just a redirected URL. So that's why we have that cool symbol. So Glenna's, um, Glenna's comment merits noting about being able to accept attachments on internal forms, but not on anonymous. Uh, forms. I think that's a, a pretty useful thing for, for folks to be aware of. I haven't tested that. But. Right, because uh -huh. there has to be a place to save them. And if you know you know who the person is, it goes in their OneDrive, right? Gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense, Chris. And, and wah, wah, <laughs> back right. to the, and to, not everybody gets access to that. I wonder what happens if it's a group. Does it maybe go into the, to the, is it the, person who created it if you make the group the owner oh shared docs. Oh, that's the, what the i was hoping the, that's the owner of the, the form oh there we go yeah. okay yeah all right cool super super useful thank you glenna thank you krista for chiming in there uh, anything else to cover on resources a lot of them speak for themselves people can dive in as much as they see fit to uh, through any of these links anything else to add folks it sounds like it sounds like folks on the call are are given forms some use, which is great. And I think people like Todd who decided that they were, you know, worthless and no way I not just, touching it. I've decided I don't like them, and you can't change my mind. There's, like, there's no, there's no like command line interface. Is the problem? Yeah, the, the meme with the guy with the coffee cup and the table. You know, <laughs> form sucks. Change my mind. Yeah, I'm out. I think I think that the best use that I've seen is. Uh, you know, sort of regularly do is you know, like on an HR site, you've got a form embedded in the page, like I want paid time off or I want, you know, I want more information about benefits or whatever. It's just a great way to set up something like that to, to happen really easily. I also think as someone who, again, the least technical person here, I think with respect to forms versus lists, a non-technical user has more of a fighting chance at building something useful in forms than they do in trying to learn conditional formatting and lists, learn JSON, learn calculated columns, learn list permissions, et cetera. Um, we all speak very fluently in that because we're all SharePoint people, but to civilians, I think forms represents a really nice solution if you if you fit in that simpler category solutions. Uh, I love that we're using war war uh, <laughs> analogies, analogies to describe <laughs> using SharePoint. Makes sense, uh, yeah. Not, yeah, dramatic. yeah you know, PTSD. PTSD, I get it, yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, up and coming, a couple folks, how how many? Raise your hands, some Praxi, if you're going to be in Chicago next week at the uh, EDUCON. Two plus Derek, right? We'll be, mm -hmm. we'll be there. Um, obviously, we're steaming full tilt toward Collab Days New England. If you're a dev and you haven't listened to Julie and AC, on Cloud Dev Clarity, highly, highly recommend that you spend some time on that. Um, 
And October 5th, I think we are up in the air. I think we uh, have, have a TBA out there. So look for a poll from us, probably in the form of a Microsoft form uh, about possible topics as well. Otherwise, right. I know we're approaching the top of the hour. Julie, anything to, to add in closing? Nope. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thanks, Sympraxians, for the, um, for the prep and the dialogue. Um, much appreciated, and we'll talk to you in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Ask Simpraxis. We love getting your questions or session ideas. You can submit by using the link in About. If you find this helpful, hit that like or subscribe button and share this content with your colleagues. Join us again as we release new content every other Wednesday.